This morning we're going to do something a little different. Okay? And I, we've worked with the worship team, and um, God really has put this in His plan to to have a service of worship and scripture reading to tell the story of Jesus, to tell the story of the history of Israel. <laughs> Pay attention. Okay? To reflect on where we have come from, our heritage, our ancestry, to where Jesus was born and saved Israel, brought them out of captivity. Okay? Um, so there's going to be song that everybody should participate in. Um, there's going to be scripture readings from your fellow classmates that will accompany those songs and kind of just lead us through the service. And I really want this service to be a time of remembrance. And yes, Jesus was a baby and he was born just like you and I were. But he's also the savior of the world. This is your savior, he's my savior. And so, as much as we have and love this time of Christmas, let's just remember who he really is. Um, I wanna pray and then uh, we're gonna start by reading excerpts from Psalm 106 which tells a little bit of the history of what, what we've been through and what Israel went through and what God did for them. Um, and we'll just let God move. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, um, just come to you this morning and we, we thank you again for your son Jesus. We thank you for his birth And we thank you for showing us mercy in the desert. We thank you for showing us mercy in captivity. And we thank you for the king that was born and ruled and reigned on this earth for your kingdom, lived a perfect life for us and sacrificed all of it so that we might come into a relationship with you. Father, the words and the, the songs that we sing today, I pray that, that they wouldn't just be songs and words, that they would be physical representations and worship to you for what you've done for us. And I pray that you would receive them and that you would help us to come into a remembrance and reflection on who you really are for us. Thank you for this time together. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We have sinned. Even as our ancestors did. We have done wrong and acted wickedly. When our ancestors were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses. And they rebelled by the sea. The Red Sea. Yet he saved them for his name's sake, to make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up, and he led them through the depths as through the desert. He saved them from the hand of the foe, from the hand of the enemy, he redeemed them. The waters covered their adversaries. Not one of them survived. Then they believed his promises and sang his praise. But they soon forgot what he had done and did not wait for his plan to unfold. In the desert, they gave in to their craving. In the wilderness, they put God to the test. So he gave them what they asked for. In the camp, they grew envious of Moses and Aaron, who were consecrated to the Lord. Fire blazed among their followers, a flame consumed the wicked. At Horeb they made a calf and worshipped an idol cast from metal. They exchanged their glorious God for an image of a bull which eats grass. They forgot the God who saved them, 
who had done great things in Egypt, miracles in the land of Ham, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. So he said he would destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them. Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his promise. They grumbled in their tents and did not obey the Lord. So he swore to them with uplifted hand that he would make them fall in the wilderness, make their descendants fall among the nations and scatter them throughout the lands. They yoked themselves to Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices offered to lifeless gods. They aroused the Lord's anger by their wicked deeds and a plague broke out among them. They did not destroy the people as the Lord had commanded them, but they mingled with the nations and adopted their customs. They worshiped their idols, which became a snare. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was desecrated by their blood. They defiled themselves by what they did. Therefore, the Lord was angry with them, and he gave them into the hands of the nations, and their foes ruled over them, their enemies oppressed them and subjected them to their power. Many times he delivered them, but they were bent on rebellion and they wasted away in their sin. Yet he took note of their distress when he heard their cry. For their sake he remembered his covenant and out of his great love he relented. He caused all who held them captive to show them mercy. Save us, Lord our God, and gather us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Amen.
Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that is which conceived is her from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus.
shepherds in the regions were let's start again and in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch by their flock by night and the angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear and the angel said to them fear not for behold I bring good news of great joy that will be for all the people for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord and this will be a sign for you you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and, and lying in a manger. And suddenly there with the angel was a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. Concerning this child, and all who heard it and wondered what, all, at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherd returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, and it had been told to them.
can't bear watching or silent clocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is. against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Feel, Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord, is, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you whom, who mourn for, fe for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, and at that time, I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame, and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise, and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you in, at the, same at the time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the people of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Deliver 
Y'all can be seated.
stand up for this last reading of scripture from Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar that crosses their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. We're going to sing one more song together. And I want to hear you guys sing this too. Jesus, may your name be exalted in this place today. We thank you. We thank you that you saw our need. And despite our sin, which we deserve just punishment for, you came to pass that punishment on to yourself that we might receive your mercy and your grace. 
So God, we thank you. We thank you for coming down, stepping down on this planet and joining us. God, I pray that as we exit here and the rest of this week and go into our Christmas break, Lord, we do not forget. We do not forget the fact that you have loved us. We thank you. We give you the glory today. In the name of Christ. Amen. Guys.